Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Oh my gosh, almost said Thursday. That's not a joke that I just do every day. I promise. I really don't know what day it is. The days are all blurring together. And that's amazing. That's okay. I see lots of friends in the chat. What's up? We've got, oh, got my volume on. <laughs> that's what we've got. We've got Kendall in the chat, Sam Peterson, Rodney. Hello, Van Damme designer, my favorite young designer. Good to see you. Happy Friday. I like that, Cheryl. I like that a lot. So if you are new to the Daily Creative Challenge, I'm Kathleen, like it says over here, yes. Uh, I'm gonna be your host for this week that we just did together and then also next week. So this challenge goes until next Friday. And let me actually show you my screen so you can see what I'm seeing. Actually, my screen's not plugged in. Let's get that plugged in. Paco, if you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keith, hello, good to see you. Okay, let's do this again. There we go. So if you want to see the actual dates for the challenge, they are there at the top. It's gonna to be going until next Friday. And this challenge is a two week challenge to build your Photoshop skills. If you're a beginner, this is perfect. We're going slow, we're going steady. Uh, but also if you're more advanced, you can always take these challenges to the next level and show me what you got. Very cool. Howdy, Lindsay, Chris, hello. New challenge, who dis? Dennis, who is this for real? Uh, Ashi says this is such a great place for networking. You think so? I love this community. We're all very helpful, kind, strong network to be sure. What's up, Chad? Good to see you. Good morning, evening, and night as well. I like that Adobe Live. Okay, so if you want to know about the challenges that we've already been through, you can scroll on down here and check out that we've done blend modes, layers, adjustment layers. And today, we're talking about the frame tool. I teased yesterday that we started off the first three days like pretty simple, just the basics. And then today we're gonna get into a tool that maybe not a lot of people know about. Do you guys all know about the blend tool or not the blend tool, the frame tool? Have you used it before? I'm gonna show you kind of simply how it works uh, and then show you what you can do with it. It's very nice. What's up Dorvillis? Good to see you, Charles, Chris. Chris from Canada. Sig says, let's play. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so first we need to go over what this challenge is all about. You will receive the daily challenge every day, either by coming to this landing page, which is behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, or you can join us on Discord, which is this, our beautiful 24 seven uh, community. It's like a it's like a 7-Eleven, your favorite 7-Eleven that you can just pop into 24 hours a day and get design feedback? Is that what 7-Eleven is all about? <laughs> um, people have been posting their work from yesterday, which is awesome, but if you wanna learn about the challenge of the day, you can come up here to the Creative Challenge in the Announcements uh, group, and Sam will post it for you. This will also have the starter files if you wanna work with the files that I'm working with, but you can totally use your own images. You do not have to use these starter files. Lindsay says, I heart the blend tool. I learned about it from Martina Flores stream. Oh, cool. That's awesome. All right, so if you wanna join Discord, you just go to bit.ly slash capital P, capital S, Discord, PS Discord, right there. And you can post your work to get feedback. You can chat with friends and network, as Ashi was saying. You can ask questions and get advice on your career. It's, it's pretty great. Ashi says, you've helped me a lot, Kathleen. You are appreciated. You trying to get me to cry up in this club? Thank you, Ashi. I appreciate it. All right, so let's just dive right in to the frame tool. Like I said, if you want to use the same files that I'm gonna be using, click this get started button. And there are some stock previews that you can play with as well as the starter file, which is really just like a square Photoshop document. It's nothing special. You can make it on your own. Abigail, go, what's up? Everyone go check out Abigail's work. An awesome illustrator that I met at 99U last year, year before. It feels like a long time ago, but I hope you're doing well. All right, so I'm gonna be using this middle vintage -y photo. Let's open up Photoshop and get to going. So this is actually cool. If you're on a Mac, this works. I don't know about PCs, but maybe someone can let me know. You can double click Photoshop 2020 or whatever version you have here at the top and it will fill your screen. Isn't that amazing? Also, you can do the same thing if you hold shift and click the plus button. So the maximize button. 
Pamela says, not sure I've heard of the frame tool. Well, you're about to hear about it now, Pamela. <laughs> Sig says, I took the DCC from Kathleen in 2019. That's how long you've been around? Very cool. Samantha, hello. All right, so I'm gonna show you kind of three different ways that you can use the frame tool and that should hopefully kind of explain what it is and why you would use it. So I've got this image already opened in a, just a square Photoshop document. If you wanna do something similar to me, you can just go up to file, new, and this document is just a thousand by a thousand pixels at 300 PPI, so it's a square. Click create, and then you can just grab your image from your files and drag it in and you will be where I am. Let's close this though. Okay, so one way to use the frame tool is to use an image that you already have. All you have to do is right click on the layer. And I always lose this because there are so many different options. Da, da, da. There should be, yes, frame from layers. So when I select that, you can rename it. So we will just do header image, imager. <laughs> and you'll notice in my layers panel, now we have this frame. So if I were to come over here to the frame tool in my toolbar, if you've never used it before, you might not know where it is. So it's usually below like the crop tool, but the hotkey for it is K. So if you're on another tool and you just tap K, you will select the frame tool. All right, with the frame tool selected, I can double click into here. You'll notice that the border turns gray. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. The border turns gray and now I can move the image around within my frame. I could even transform it if I like, but it won't go outside the bounds of the frame that I've built. Perfect. Maybe even center it a little bit. So if you've used InDesign before, you might find this very comforting and similar to the way that InDesign works. When you uh, put in a raster image in InDesign, there's always like by default a frame around the image and you can always decrease and increase the size of the frame as you see fit. So this is kind of like a hybrid InDesign to Photoshop tool. Is that choo 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 effect coming from Paul Tranny? <laughs> maybe, maybe I picked it up from Paul. So if you want to change around like the position of your image within the frame, make sure that your image is focused on in the layers panel. You see this like slight white outline around it. If you want to actually change the dimensions or size of the actual frame, click on the frame thumbnail and then we can change it from there. So does that kind of feel like InDesign to y'all? Cause it definitely feels like InDesign to me. All right, so this is good for if you're laying out multiple images and you want it to be kind of in a specific uh, layout. It's nice if you're laying out a bunch of text with images, like this kind of looks like it could be the cover of a Instagram zine, maybe called Introspect. I'm imagining kind of like Kinfolk, if you know Kinfolk, the, the publishing, very hipster. Okay, cool, so that's one way to use the frame tool. That's a really nice pick, I think so too. I think so too. Susanna says, I think I need to update. I can't find it. Oh no. What version do you have? It's been around for a while. If you don't see it over here in your toolbars, you could reset your workspace, maybe to essentials. But if you want to reset, it's up here at the top. Or you can even see more tools by doing this uh, edit toolbar. This is a little hot tip if you didn't know. So there are some tools that you are not seeing on your toolbar and you can even choose what tool you want to be kind of the main tool within a group so say you use the polyg polygonal polygon tool often that could be your top tool instead of the rectangle tool nicole says this will make certain tasks so much easier once i finally get back to work nicole that made my whole day worth it i'm so glad to hear that <laughs> dennis thank you for the the creative cloud plug What's the difference between the frame tool and a clipping mask? They're pretty similar, Tunk, to be honest, but with the frame tool, the I believe the mask is a little easier to control. Like you can just get in here, change it super easily. Whereas with the clipping mask, it would have to work with two different layers. Um, and I think this is just more comfortable for people who might 
be interested in InDesign. <laughs> Dennis, that's nice. Okay, and if you guys have any other ideas about how they might be different or similar to clipping masks or other tools, throw them in the chat. Let's discuss. All right, let me show you another way to use this frame tool. I'm just gonna delete everything we just did. Wow, scary. Over here in the frame tool, you'll notice at the top, there are two different options. So you can use a rectangular frame or a circular frame or elliptical, as they like to say. So let's choose elliptical. I'm going to just drag from one corner to the other. You'll notice when I'm making a new frame, it's not constrained to a perfect square or circle, but if you wanna do that, just hold down shift. And there you go, we have a circular frame that takes up the entirety of the image. And we already have a frame over here in the layers panel. What's up, Valder? Good to see you. Okay, so this is one of my favorite parts of the frame tool, and this is how it's different from clipping masks. You can literally just plop images in here. So let me go to my finder, go back to our stock image. Let's move this out of the way. Got my stock image right up here. And I'm just gonna drag, drag it and drop it, and it's already filled in that frame. Cool, so from here we could go to our frame tool, double click, move things around within it. We can even rotate things. I imagine this is like the Twitter uh, icon for like a, an editor for a, a, history, a history magazine. She looks very smart and historical to me. Cool, and then we could even grab both of them, move them around as we need to, and go from there. <clears throat> Will it replace if you do it again? Yeah, you can just drop another image in there. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so there is one more way that I'm gonna show you how to make frames. Delete, I love doing that in Photoshop, just delete, just deleting things. And then you can just Command Z if you want it to come back. <laughs> Mia says I like that girl's hat, me too. I just got a hat like that in Animal Crossing. I like to wear it as I catch fish and, and hit rocks. All right, so let's show one more way to make some frames. And this is similar to what I'm gonna do for the final piece. I believe this is the final. Yes. So here's my final little baked the cake before I showed you how to bake it. Uh, so let me show you how I got this diamond pattern. Over here in the toolbar, you will see some shape tools. U is the hotkey for it. And I could put a bunch of rectangles on here and make that into a frame, but I'm gonna do a custom shape tool. Come up here to my control bar and choose one of these cool custom shapes. I've already landed on a diamond pattern and I like that. So let me just draw a couple diamonds. They're not constrained to be perfect diamonds, so let's hold shift to do that. We'll drop it into the middle with those smart guides. And then I'm going to draw another one or I could just duplicate this layer. A super easy way to duplicate is Command or Control J. So I'll do that and boom, over here in my layers panel, we have two. And then if I use my move tool, there we go. Now for this to work, we're gonna have to merge both of these shape layers to each other. So I'm gonna select both you can do that by doing uh, clicking one and holding shift and clicking the other. Then we're gonna right click on the layers and down here in the merge options, you can do merge shapes. So that way it's still a live shape. I could come in here and change the color super easily, but they're merged together, but they're still paths, which is important. <laughs> because U for shape is so intuitive. Hey, S was already taken by the stamp. Stamp came first, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> Does no one else play Don't Starve together? Oh, that's a fun game. Has anyone else ever played it? I've actually never played Jennifer, but I like to watch people play it. All right, so let's turn this into a frame. We already know how to do this. We can right click and do convert to frame, or this is pretty cool. We can come up to layers, do new, and convert to frame here. We could call this snake eyes. And there you go, we have two 
diamonds in one frame and if we were to drop our image in here it will fill up both of them so let's increase the size a little bit so that's how i made that kind of intricate diamondy pattern that's kind of cool i like that only so many letters unless we make some new ones All right, so let's jump back to our finished product. So check this out over here in my frames. It's like right, right here. You'll see a bunch of these diamonds. I even integrated uh, some larger rectangles so that I could have more of her face visible over here. But I did want to have a bunch of smaller shapes over on the right side where the edge of her silhouette was to kind of break it up a little bit. I thought that was interesting. Your default shapes are so complicated. Oh no, Nicole. Uh, Danish says whenever I've used the pin tool, it makes a new path, but I don't know what a path is. But yeah, paths are a little bit complicated, especially when you're used to just worrying about pixels. Uh, but paths are non-destructive. They're kind of like vectors. You can go back and change them with the pin tool, drop new points. And if you are confused and don't want to see the paths on your screen anymore, just make sure you're selecting a different layer and then selecting a different tool. Shine bright like a diamond. I agree, Chad. I agree. Could you push yourself to the other side? Keith just does not like me on the right side. I will push myself to the left side as a true lefty. Alrighty. So the way that I got the colors to look like this in my final piece, it's all stuff that we've learned in previous days. Let me turn these off. So we have a color fill layer that I changed the blend mode to. So if it's just normal, I'll show you. If it's just normal, and I'll unclip it as well, it just fills it with orange, which covers up all of our work, and we do not want that. So let's come up here to our blend modes, find one that we like. Some of these will automatically knock out the background to be white again. But say I like this one, but it has that bright yellow background, which I don't want. All I'm going to do is make a clipping mask out of this layer, so it's clipped just to our human subject. Create clipping mask. There we go. And then we can add our diamonds. And these are also on different blend modes. So they are on top of our subject. I kind of like that pink actually. But they're not too distracting. Like that's a little distracting. <laughs> but if we go back to multiply, there we go. To the left, to the left, yes. I was hiding some menus, some very important menus, VIMs. Cool. And then if you want to, you can change the background as well. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Hmm. Interesting. But we'll stick with this for now. So I've also shown a different option. Here we go. To show how you can use the same image in multiple different frames to have this cool kind of like kaleidoscope or fractally refre refracted, <laughs> reflected uh, look. So I'll take you on a little tour of my layers. I just put one rectangular frame in the middle. So I just use the shape tool with the rectangle tool. And then I made two other rectangles and initially they were on different layers. So then you use that merge shapes option when you right click on the layers. So now I have two, did the same thing and the same thing. And then I just kept dragging the same image into the frame over and over again. And you'll notice that these are also smart objects, the images that you drag in. So for example, if I double click into this, I erased her ear <laughs> and saved it so that you wouldn't see her ear right there. We haven't talked much about smart objects yet. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them uh, either on Discord or maybe tomorrow, uh, but we have not covered that yet. So if you're confused about what those are, no worries. Could you do this with letters and typefaces as well? Yes. You definitely can, which is very cool. You can make frames out of letters and just drop multiple images in. All right, so chat, which one do you want me to upload onto Discord or Behance? We've got this one, we've got this one. I might just stick with my original since it was the one that I showed most of the workflow on. But this one's pretty cool too, right? I even added a gradient on these and kind of edited it and played with it a little bit. Nicole, you like it? That's actually gorgeous. <laughs> like most of the stuff I do isn't actually gorgeous. I'm just kidding. I know most of the stuff I do is pretty simple. It's a simple challenge. 
Oh, Adobe Live, thank you. Yes, um, I'll talk about that at the end, but I will be streaming this weekend on my personal Behance profile. We're probably just be gonna be doing some illustration. All right, let's export this one and get it uploaded onto Discord and onto Behance. <laughs> uh, will a frame work on a non-shape layer like a cutout image converted into a frame? Maybe, uh, you'll have to try and, con if you go to layers and then convert to frame, but I'm not sure why you would wanna do that if you'll just be filling the image with something else. Alrighty, let's make sure our width doesn't have to be that big for Behance. We'll get this exported. Let's put it in our folder. We've got April, we've got day four. Let's do final day four. Save it there. Howard, this challenge has definitely put you in a better frame of mind. Glad to hear it. I saw your joke earlier. I'm sorry I didn't, didn't recognize it. I read it though and I laughed in my mind. Cool, it looks like Off Center has already started doing some framing here. These are both the starter images. Very nice. Let me put my work in the current challenge channel so I can get some feedback. April day four, final. Alrighty. Let's see, what do I want feedback on? I think the text is a little unneeded, but I want to keep it to keep consistency. What do you think? Upload it there. Make sure to put your work here if you want to get feedback. Like I mentioned yesterday, I've been a little busy these last couple of days, so I haven't been in here that often, but I will try to be in more, and there are also awesome other people that can give you feedback as well, and you can give feedback to other people too. Oh, that's the live stream. So if we go to our profiles on Behance, say we've gotten our feedback, we've made our edits, and we want to put it on our final project. We need a future challenge channel. We have one of those, Sean. At least we have like uh, future challenge ideas. All right, let's edit our photo grid. Let's delete day four, upload our photo. This is why it's important to stay organized because you have to upload the same image across multiple places. There we go. And you'll notice that it will come in usually always on the right but you can easily just grab it, drag it, drop it. You're good to go. Actually, there is a little tip about future challenges that I am gonna show you in just a moment. But let's save this. Let's check it out really quickly. So we've got our play at home challenge. Yay, there we go. We've got day one, two, three, four. And don't worry, I'm gonna be back next week on Monday at 9 a.m. with another challenge. That's actually a great excuse for me to show you that if you, whoa, Inception, if you are watching the stream right now, which I think you probably are, uh, you can scroll down here and check out the schedule for the rest of the day. So we just had Terry doing his photography masterclass, which was super cool. So much info. He's like, hold on, I got one more master tip. Hold on. One more tip. <laughs> it's got so many. Uh, then we have some video and motion graphics streams coming up right after me with Jason, which are always super informative and fun. Then Julia is going to be doing her daily creative challenge for Illustrator. So if you want to learn Illustrator, that's a great place to go. Scroll to the right. Howard's going to be up next, or not next, but at noon with the XD Masterclass, episode 12. Wow, it's a lot. After that, we're gonna have Andrew and Nick doing some office hours, very cool. So maybe some uh, portfolio reviews, perhaps. Then we're gonna have our XD Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse. Kyle's gonna be doing a draw along. Jeff is gonna be doing some speed painting, which is super cool. And then on Monday, you can see the lineup. So here's the future challenge. Here's a little tip. You can keep scrolling and see what's gonna be coming up on Monday. Maybe even another stream with me. Super cool. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely check that out. I'm going to head out of here. Stick around for more Adobe Live to be coming up in the next couple minutes. I really appreciate you sticking around with me for this whole week, and hopefully you'll be back on Monday. But go to Discord over the weekend if you have questions. 
Uh, I'll be hanging out there and I'll be streaming on Saturday, but follow me on Instagram if you want to learn more about that. My Instagram is Kathleen Illustrated. Thank you, Adobe Live, for posting that. Have a great day, everybody, and I will see you on Monday or Saturday. Bye.